Welcome back to Friday Night Fever. I'm Jason Williams. And I'm Sammy Roebuck, ready for another episode of Friday Night Fever. Uh, Sammy, do you know that it's Friday the 13th? I did know that. Actually, I'm the one that sent it, sent it up to our work colleagues. I didn't even notice till halfway through the day. Yeah, I didn't notice until I got to the stadium and they were playing some Halloween music. They told me that I was like, hey, man, that it's Friday sense. the 13th. And Absolutely. It probably would have been a good game for everybody to dress up in costumes. I know I used to do that when I was in high school. Oh, yeah. We would have one game where it's a costume out. But. Oh, yeah. You know, dressing up for high school games is just really fun, especially Absolutely. being a student. Of course. It just brings another era of student section. Oh, yeah. Always fun to do. Let's go ahead and get to our game of the week. We got the new Albany Bulldogs taking on the North Pontotoc Vikings. The Friday Night Fever Game of the Week is sponsored by Game Day Haircuts. Loving the fireworks out in Ecru tonight. Let's get to that action. North Pontotoc, you know, they kicked off the game with an onside kick. Surprise! But New Albany was able to come up with the recovery to start the game. And on the first drive, Bulldogs quarterback Braden Shettles. He's going to look around, drop, and find Dedrick Robinson Jr., who's going to run by a couple of defenders and find his way into the end zone. 7-0 New Albany. Bulldogs deep in the red zone again. This time they're just going to hand it off to Keelan Simpson, who gets a one-yard touchdown. 14-0 Bulldogs. Right here, the Vikings are punting again. Jeb. Bolin on the punt return. He has a second to adjust his helmet and he's going to reverse field. He's going to come. He's got a couple blockers in front of him helping guide the way and he will score. This play actually got called back as you can see a flag back there, but he just strolled into the end zone. He actually walked, just straight up walked, but unfortunately it didn't count. So shuttles, he's just going to have to find him again later on in that drive. Bolin on the touchdown, New Albany dominated the Vikings on the road in this one. New Albany 42, North Pontotoc 0. This is homecoming in Kosu tonight, class of 2013 celebrating. Then you've got the queen herself being crowned by her dad. Aggies hosted by the Belmont Cardinals. Kosu QB Hank Eaton, he keeps it with a big stretch right here, and that's a touchdown. Aggies first on the board tonight. Two-point conversion was good, 8-0. to zero. Of course, fireworks for that, too. Belmont quarterback Luke Smith looking to answer, but he's sacked by a swarm of Aggies. Big loss for the Cardinals there. Kossuth ball eaten again, but he airs it out this time. Number two, Reed Coward, and he is untouched down the driveway to the front door to the house. Touchdown Aggies. PAT good, quickly up 15-0, uh, excuse me. Got to go for and, two sometimes. <laughs> absolutely, and that turned into a 57-7 win for the Aggies. Big game tonight. Had to make a double on my run tonight. Went out to Pontotoc as they are hosting Lafayette. County tonight, Warriors punting the ball right here. And Demarion Gibson of the Commodore is going to be on the return. And he's going to run to the right. And he will reverse field as well. He's going to run it all the way down the left side. I got two special teams touchdowns tonight. He just didn't like the look of that one, so he had to go left. Yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes there's just not room on that side, so you just got to go the other sometimes way. Sometimes right is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Lafayette getting it done on the defensive side of the ball as well. Number 90, Tyler Wiley going to come up with the sack. And they just got it done on all three sides of the ball, all three phases. Davion Bell going to run it in for the Commodores as they dominate on the road as well, 42-17. to And we got the New Hope Trojans traveling to Corinth to face the Warriors. 20-13 to with seven minutes left in the half. Warrior quarterback Quintavier Young. Passes to number four, Jalen Sackens for a first down there, but they went on to punt on that drive, unfortunately. Still cheering for that first down, though. Trojan ball, quarterback Juice Tate hands it off to Jeremiah Harkins. He runs up the sidelines for a first down for the Trojans, but they went on to punt there and didn't do anything before the half ended, and Trojans went on to lose 27 to the Warriors 34. And out in Boonville tonight, we have Boonville hosting the man Tachi. And it's senior Mustangs. Mustangs, and it's senior night out there tonight. Opening kickoff, the Caden Gaston on the return. He's going to take this one all the way to the house. He's got a convoy of Blue Devils running along with him. Yeah, the and, gas for that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't touched. 80 yard touchdown. 
7-0 Blue Devils. Mantachi in the Wildcat. Run by John Hood. He's going to be met, side, met by Brodson Pippins. No gain on the play. Mantachi going to have to punt back to Boonville. Boonville quarterback Noah Gillen. He's looking to his left. He's going to find Zion Nunn. Stiff arm. Still running down the sideline. So, whoop, stiff arm. <laughs> oh, they're going to call him out of bounds. I think he scored right there. They called him out of bounds. I think he scored. He did get a lot of stiff arms. Uh, uh, that, yeah, you know. but they're going to go back That's to Zion Nunn, and he's going to finish the job this time. I, you know, Sammy, I really think he scored right there. I'm going to go back and look at that one. <laughs> we'll just have to, check. to run it back. We'll have to slow it down for you. But Boonville went on to win this one big, 49-6. to six. We've got Calhoun City versus Bruce. Huge Calhoun County rivalry. It goes back for years. We were talking about it today. First play of the game, kickoff to number one, Jamaj Jamaze, and he takes it all the way down the sidelines for a touchdown, a huge touchdown. Six to zero, Calhoun City. Two-point conversion was no good. Later on, first quarter, they hand it off to, guess who, Jamaj Jamaze. Again, touchdown, two-point conversion made up for it this time. Jamaj J six. knows how to find the end zone, Sammy. He sure does. It's like a magnet for him. Again, first quarter, and it's first and 35, and there goes Mays right past our Wayne Herford for another touchdown, making the score 22-0. A big night for the young man and a big night for Calhoun City. Hat trick. Absolutely, and they go on to win 58 Two, six. Wow, big night. Let's take a look at some of those full screens. South Pontotoc, 35 to eight over Alcorn Central. Louisville, once again, big night for the Wildcats, 55 to seven. And Neshoba Central wins a close w win in overtime over Columbus, 25 to 24. It's one of the only close games we've seen. <laughs> we've got Ripley ripping through again, still undefeated, 38 to Itawamba, six. And then Oxford knocking DeSoto Central 40 to 22, and Noxabee County with a shutout against Enterprise Clark 41 to zero, and that was the first time those two teams met. It was a brutal meeting for Clark. Yeah, unfortunate. For sometimes, you know, sometimes first impressions they just don't go well hey, for we you. Made a big first impression. <laughs> yeah. They said this is our field, okay? Our field, our house. We're not going to let you come in and Absolutely. dominate. That's what they said. 41 to zero, Sammy. A lot of blowouts tonight going on. So many blowouts. You know, a lot of times we we say you don't ever know who's going to win, but tonight those games were very clear winners. Yeah, and some of, a lot of these teams got it done on the road too. New Albany, our game of the week, went on the road and won 42 to zero. Absolutely, and th that just shows you know they're a good team. Oh yeah, a really good team. That's their second region win of the season. That puts them at two and one for the year. I think Oxford got a win tonight. That puts them at 2-0 and in region play right now. That They're making up for it. You know, they had a lot of work to do, but they're getting there. Yeah. Oxford's getting there. Yeah, as long as, you, as long as you're doing good in region play, that's when it really matters. matters. That's what really District matters. District play is what matters. You know, we're just setting up, getting everything loose and fancy free, and then you get to district play, and yeah. that's when it gets down. That's the games that matters. Once you win those, you find your way into the playoffs and then Absolutely. let the seeds fall where they may. Absolutely, or the touchdowns. Or the band of the week. <laughs> of the week is sponsored by Northeast Mississippi Community College. The Friday Night Fever Cheer Squad of the Week is sponsored by Stone's Jewelry. Sounded like I heard some fireworks. Yeah, the, the fireworks were still going on when I was filming that earlier. Yeah, the I love that. Yeah, they started the fireworks pretty early out in North Pontotoc You tonight. know, Friday night football, it takes up the whole Friday. It's not just the night times, not just the afternoon. You start in the morning yeah. when you go to school. You wear your pink out, your white out, your whatever and you yeah. keep on going. And then you get ready for senior night, homecoming. Absolutely, the fireworks. The Friday the 13th. The music, the jams. Oh yeah, gotta love them. And Absolutely. You know, you know what else you gotta love? You gotta the love plays. some more football Absolutely. plays. <laughs> Starkville Yellow Jackets looking to bounce back against the Clinton Arrows this week. Eight minutes left in the first quarter early on in the game. Number 12, Brady Torrance ran 50 yards for the Arrows. Ooh, 
he gone. Running by the defenders. <laughs> They're not going to touch him before he reaches the end zone. Arrows get on the board first. Now Starkville. They're not going to waste any time responding in this one. Number seven, C.J. Willis is going to find his way into the end zone in the corner. He like, ah, got to hold up the wrist. <laughs> I, I've, that's a new celebration I've been seeing a lot, Sammy. They Teams have just been holding They're up. They're getting creative with the sellies, I tell oh, yeah. you. Getting creative. Oh, arrow strike again right here. Jaden Holland's on the receiving end. He's going to run through that defense right there. But... This was Starkville's night to bounce back. Starkville wins 60 to 21. That's a big bounce. That's Heritage Academy Patriots face Starkville Academy Volunteers tonight over in Starkville, of course. In the middle of the second quarter, the Volunteers, they recovered a fumble. Number two, Jackson Easton on the recovery. They got hype for that in the student section. Shortly after that, number 22, Luke Johnson for the Volunteers scored a touchdown. Missed the first part, but that ended up as a touchdown, which was what matters. And then number 22, Luke Johnson, he goes for another touchdown. Big night for him tonight, making the score 21 to 0. And the Volunteers, they go on for a shutout, 35 to Heritage Academy's 0. Didn't get a good look at those push ups, not sure about the form. We, we never know about their form. Morville going to go with the onside kick, and they're going to come up with the recovery against the Chargers. Wow. What a play by Morville early on in the game. Choctaw County, he doesn't like that. Coach doesn't like that. Quarterback Brody Thompson draws back in. He's going to find a charger corner. Jaquan Pratt on the interception. That You know, that's how you make up for it. You give up an onside kick, you get the ball right back. Charger cheerleaders loving that. Choctaw County. KJ Cork going to pass it to Caleb Cunningham, five-star wide receiver for the Chargers. And he's just going to cruise to the end zone. Let's get another look at that, Sammy. It's going to cut up. You, you got to eat cunning. Cunningham. He's cunning. Oh, yeah. Let's get a slowed down version of that. They... They just didn't. Toe right there. Oh yeah. Scampers right in. Chargers go on and win this one big, 51 to 14. Big game here. Grenada Chargers travel to play all of Branch Conquistadors, and this play right here, Charlie Fair scrambling, looking for something, looking to throw it away. Right now they're up 28 to zero, but it's picked off by Conquistadors Jerry Wall. He zips back into the yard lines into the into the field and he's tiptoeing through the tulips through the yard lines into the end zone and that is a hundred yard pick six then fair passes number five Michaela taylor makes up for it scampers into the end zone and then chargers in the red zone again passes to javen heron for yet another touchdown and did you miss number five Here's Taylor again with the ball and with the touchdown, putting another nail in the Conquistador coffin. They go on to win this one 42 to 7. Like we said earlier, a lot of blowouts tonight, Sammy. Just yeah. right there, 42 to 7. Gives us a lot of highlights. Yeah. Of Starkville touchdowns. bouncing back after their loss to Germantown last week. They had they responded pretty angrily as a team does. Absolutely. As last year's 6A champs. You would probably expect them to, ex Absolutely. to respond pretty You don't want to play angry. an angry team, you know, no. especially an angry Yellow Jackets. No, 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 they're, they're going to stink. Uh, I don't know if you Absolutely. saw the scoreboard in that Grenada <laughs> game, but on the scoreboard it says, y'all, us. I, I really like that. <laughs> I that didn't was... see that, but, you know, when in Mississippi, got to throw out the y'all. Yeah, got to throw out the y'all. <laughs> it's really fun to say. If, you have, if you've been born in the South, you've been saying it then all your you know. life. But what really matters is the us. Us. And... <laughs> You know, us is here, but y'all, Garner is out in Hamilton tonight for their Absolutely. game against Walnut. Here's Garner Montgomery for the recap of that game. So, first off, I just want to shout out to the Volunteers for getting a shutout win tonight. Go Vols. But tonight here in Hamilton, it was a big district game for the Hamilton Lions and the Walnut Wildcats. Both teams with a lot to prove. Now this game opened with a kick return touchdown. I missed out on it, make it eight nothing Hamilton, but I didn't miss Isaiah Saucita taking it 50 yards downfield and a pink skirt. Wildcats definitely have some fashion sense. Camarion Gray will punch it in on the next play to make it eight to eight with two minutes into the game. So right now Walnut's got some energy going on but then another deep pass by Drew Jackson to Trenton Braddock 
So close to getting a touchdown right there. But just a couple plays later, Saucita will end up getting the job done. Give one at the lead, 16-8. to eight. Hamilton will tie the game up again. And on Walnut's next drive, Jackson's sending it deep again. But he's going to get picked off in the end zone by Chris Willis. This is a huge momentum shift because, spoiler alert, it's all Wildcats from here. You know I said I missed the first play of the game, which was a touchdown? To Corey Miller. He made that play. And here he is again, sending it 80 yards to the house on the first play of the second quarter. It's 24 to 16 after that. You know, all these two-point conversions that they're attempting, they're always going to be good, it seems like, in this game. Hamilton goes on to win 50 to 28. Huge night. The running game was pretty much unstoppable. I saw quarterback Justin Burner getting two touchdowns on the ground. This is a really lively football game. As you can see, a lot of highlights. Both teams seem pretty scary in this district. If I were at East Union or Hatley, I'd be worried about this team. And I think Hamilton's last game of the season against Hatley is going to be a great one. Because, you know, these are two. Hamilton had a lot to prove really, because they were losing the like five games over the course of the season. It's been a tough road to get to this point, but with this huge statement win, Hamilton really has a lot of momentum to win their district. Live in Hamilton, Garner Montgomery, WTVA Friday Night Fever. We were just talking about saying y'all, but I don't know about y'all, but I sure was cackling at Garner Montgomery. He had some jokes tonight. <laughs> he had some jokes. <laughs> we'll see you right after this break for more. Full screen scores. East Union and Hatley just went final moments ago. 40 to 38. East Union gets the win. Probably one of the only few close games we had tonight, actually. Absolutely. Sebastopol beating Eupora 42 21, and Biggersville getting a big win over TCPS 45 to 0. Another shutout. And then we have Winona Christian taking the dub against Marshall Academy 21 to 14. That also hit overtime. And Soligen over in Alabama, 48 over Lamar County, 6. And Red Bay, 44 over Falkville, Fol 22, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Some some pretty good, a couple of close games tonight. but every, Probably like three and then a whole a lot, lot of shutouts. Of, yeah, a whole lot of shutouts, a whole lot of blowouts. But it's just one what? of those nights, I guess. It's not just high school football. We have just a little bit of college football. Yeah, around. Ole Miss and State decided to, they were going to take a little bit of a rest this week. They're on their buys. But... The Alabama Crimson Tide are not on a bye. They will be hosting the Arkansas Razorbacks at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Early game. Early. <laughs> we'll have those highlights here for you tomorrow night. But thanks, you guys. You do, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you all next week. Have a great night.